Hello, this is Nilric, here to detail, discuss, and display the new changes, additions, and overall updates brought to Armor 3 with the new Helicopter DLC. Today we'll be looking at the CH-67 Huron for the NATO faction, the MI-290 Taru for the CSAT faction, and the M900 for the civilians. While there is an added skin for the CSAT's PO-30 Orca, it is just a skin, a humorous one at that, but it won't be a main focus here. As for the FIA and AAF, there hasn't been anything new added to their factions other than a few of their respective vehicles receiving some upgrades from the firing from vehicles portion of this DLC. Besides other visual and audible additions and enhancements, we'll also be taking a look at the newly implemented abilities of firing from vehicles such as the MH9 Hummingbird, the off-road truck, and assault boats, sling loading cargo such as vehicles and supplies underneath helicopters, and the new advanced flight model for Armor 3's helicopters, which builds upon Bohemia's flight model from their 2011 Take on Helicopters title with the addition of RT Dynamics' rotor lift flight model. So, let's get to it. Starting off with the CH-67 Huron, this is a twin-engine, tandem rotor helicopter with the main utility of heavy lifting. Based off the real-life CH-47 Chinook, it's used for troop transport as well as vehicle and other cargo transport. It comes in two variants, however both have the sling loading and firing from vehicles ability. The OD Green armed version with two window-mounted 6.5 Gatling guns with one on either side for defense, and the black transport version with the two Gatling gunner positions replaced by two additional passenger positions which you can fire your personal weapons from. The pilot and co-pilot are given a down-facing camera feed on their instruments panel to the camera mounted just before the sling hooks on the belly of the Huron. This allows for both the pilot and co-pilot to view the cargo hooks as they drop to the selected cargo and show if the hooks properly connect or not with the selected cargo. The rear of the Huron offers 16 seats for passengers besides the two gunner positions with the two most rear seats allowing the occupants to fire their personal weapons out of the back of the Huron after lowering the cargo door. Also added especially for the Huron are five support cargo containers plus lighter faction specific netted cargo loads that can be transported by the Huron via its sling loading abilities along with the heavier vehicles like the NATO Hunter MRAP. Moving on, we have the MI-290 Taru. This helicopter features a coaxial rotor system and a unique modular design. Like the Huron, the Taru is inspired by the real-life Kamov KA-226 and the S-64 Sky Crane, and serves primarily as troop and heavy supplies transport. The Taru comes in several different variants with different mission pods which mimic the utilities of the Huron support cargo containers. Both permanently attached or slingable variants that it either comes with closely attached to its tail boom between its wheels or slung under the entire helicopter by its cargo hooks which are able to be dropped and picked back up like the Huron support cargo containers. The Taru does not have a feed to its cargo sling camera on its instruments panel, like the Huron. Instead, the pilot and co-pilot rely on the rear-facing loadmaster, situated directly behind the pilot in their own windowed compartment where they face out toward the cargo area. In the fully encased version of its support pod, the Taru can transport 16 passengers as well as vehicles and other supplies. With no offensive weapons, not counting the tactical bench pods that allow the passengers to fire their personal weapons, the Taru still has countermeasure flares. The M900 is a more civil version of the MH9 Hummingbird and the AH9 Pawnee. Although it is less powerful in terms of speed and maneuvers more slowly than the military Hummingbird and Pawnee, the civilian helicopter does offer slightly more protection for the driver and passengers alike with the addition of front and rear doors. The M900 also comes in 14 different color schemes, is standard without exterior benches unlike the MH9 Hummingbird, and their interiors are more luxurious looking than those of their militarized cousins. 
like the MH9 and AH9, the M900 is allowed sling loading capabilities, but not for much more than the quad bikes, go-karts, and supply boxes. And like the AH9 Pawnee, firing personal weapons from the M900 is disabled, leaving the civilian helicopter absolutely defenseless, not counting the competence of the pilot. From the sound of it, players have dreamed about native firing mechanics from inside vehicles ever since the MH6 was introduced back in Arma 1. Now, not only is firing your character's personal weapons from the MH9 Hummingbird a standard feature in Arma 3, many other air as well as land and sea vehicles support this function as well. The vehicles that support firing from inside them are as follows. NATO's MH9 Hummingbird both variants of the NATO CH-67 Huron and the covered and uncovered variants of the NATO Transport Hemet truck. CSAT's MI-290 Taru's bench and transport variants as well as the individual bench and transport mission pods. The covered and uncovered variants of both the CSAT Tempest and Zamax transport trucks. The AAF's CH-49 Mohawk both variants of the AAF's covered and uncovered Zamac transport trucks, the FIA's non-weaponized and civilian off-road trucks as well as the regular FIA and civilian trucks, and the assault and rescue boat variants for the NATO, CSAT, AAF, and FIA factions. The ability to now transport cargo via helicopters as a standard feature in Arma 3 now opens up the field to players wanting a more logistics-based role. Being able to lift ammo, medical supplies, or vehicles to a mission area will definitely be a game changer. Once picked up, it does take a certain amount of skill to maneuver and drop larger cargo with any degree of accuracy due to their weight being able to be thrown around with the NVIDIA PhysX enabled sling ropes. The sling ropes of all helicopters can be stressed to the point of snapping and shot, leaving your cargo to either swing around more and throw you off balance or making your cargo completely drop, becoming damaged or destroyed. With the addition of the new advanced flight model, Bohemia is going to appeal to players seeking more challenge from their helicopter piloting experiences with its more simulation based controls. Upgrading their flight model from their 2011's take-on helicopter title with rotolift flight mechanics from RT Dynamics introduces room for more accurately delivered controls and effects such as wind forces and stress damage. Along with these features comes optional HUD mounted gauges which act as more clearer visual aids for different states of your flight. Improved damage models are also introduced, allowing much more damage to be sustained than regular Armor 3 flight models such as complete destruction of your main rotor. Although more popular and dedicated flight sim websites said that back in 2011, take on helicopters wasn't the most accurate of simulations, it was said that Bohemia definitely took a step in the right direction, however. But now with added details such as the vortex ring state and transitional lift, Bohemia might just be headed towards having a fairly similar level of simulation that Eagle Dynamics' DCS series gives. Maybe. In addition to all this amazing new native content, Bohemia was gracious enough to include a ton of new aesthetic assets for either regular scenarios, zoo scenarios, or cinematic scenes. What you're seeing here is actually just a portion of the new objects and include more than what's shown here. And even though many if not most of these pieces are purely for looks, there are several objects that have native, non-scripted inventories for a little bit more utility. One object in particular is what's called a fuel bladder, with an optional but recommended berm container which helps keeps it from being ran over and damaged by horizontal means. And they do just what they sound like they do. They offer refueling abilities to vehicles within close proximity. Both the fuel bladder and berm container come in tan and green and are used in real life, but in game they would make for much safer landing zones for helicopters as they can be placed very closely to a landing zone while keeping out of reach of the given helicopter's rotors, unlike a fuel truck with its much taller profile. As for the probably lesser noticed changes and enhancements to the game, exterior forces on the hull of your helicopter can now be heard and seen from inside the cockpit in the form of winds whistling past you and beating against the hull of your helicopter.
or the sound of your aircraft's frame creaking as you put more stress on it with more extreme maneuvers. Your view will also tend to shake with the more stressful turns you make. It should be noted that these features do not actually damage your aircraft outside of the advanced flight model. Under your vehicle's instruments display on your HUD, there is now a constantly displayed row of icons indicating the state of your landing gear, flaps if your sling hook is in use, the state of your collision lights, and other equipment as well. Still staying outside of the advanced flight model, you have an improved damage model for all helicopters, allowing much rougher emergency landings, more extensive non-hull related damage which leaves your helicopter intact for the most part instead of exploding on impact, and caution alarms for either sustaining minor damage or crippling damage. Now, while I do recommend purchasing this DLC, I don't recommend it just primarily for the ability to fly the new helicopters, but mostly as a way to further your support for Bohemia's work. The ones who do buy this DLC will either be passionate about helicopter piloting, or will want to support the developers. The way I see it, the ability to fly the new helicopters is sort of a thank you from Bohemia. If you choose not to buy this DLC, it's pretty much a no harm no foul. You'll still be able to lift cargo with the earlier helicopters. You'll be able to access the firing from vehicles or FFV positions in all FFV enabled land, sea, and air vehicles. And you'll have access to the advanced flight model. As for myself, I've picked this DLC up just due to how much this new content really just reinforces my love and my hope for the series. It's all just really amazing and detailed work that Bohemia's put out, and they definitely deserve what praise you deem them worthy of. And with that being said, that does it for this update video where I've gone over the changes and additions coming to Armor 3 with the Helicopter DLC. So, thanks for stopping by and for watching. This is Nolwert, signing out.